Hello and welcome back to another video in the Introduction to Windows Forensics series. This time we're going to talk about RDP Cache, that is Remote Desktop Protocol Cache. Now if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you are already familiar with what RDP is and why we use it. But did you know that when you use the mstsc.exe RDP client on Windows, that would be this client, that cache is actually stored within your user profile under app data local Microsoft terminal server client cache, as you can see here. Now the purpose of this cache, as you might imagine, is to improve performance by caching sections of the screen that infrequently change. In this video, we'll take a look at a tool that can extract these bitmap files. Once the tool parses the cache, we'll be left with a number of small, usually 64 by 64, bitmap tiles. Unfortunately, the tool is incapable of reassembling a complete image of the contents of a screen scrape as seen by the user, and that's due in part because of the fact that the cache is not written from top to bottom, or left to right, or in any other common predictable order. In fact, one article I reviewed from OpenText, which was formerly Guidance Software, the makers of InCase Forensic, stated that the direction in which the mouse cursor moves may be partly responsible for the order in which the cache files are written. But regardless, we'll often be able to reassemble sections of the screen manually, not unlike putting together a puzzle, and glean data such as file names, icons, backgrounds, and various other data that could be useful in helping us determine the actions of a given user. In our lab environment, I have two non-domain joined boxes, one Server 2012 R2, the other Server 2016. Over the past few days, I've initiated multiple RDP sessions from this Windows 10 machine to those servers. I've launched a number of different programs, run PowerShell scripts, and perform various other actions consistent with those that may be performed by an attacker. In the lab section of this video, we're going to be using BMC Tools, which is an RDP bitmap cache parser to extract the data from the RDP cache. This is a free open source script written in Python, and I'll include a link to it in the video description below. It's also important to note that this is one of the only tools I've found that can perform these functions. The other is an in-case in script called RDP Cached Bitmap Extractor. Now, while the script itself is free, it obviously requires a commercial tool to use it. So in the next section of the video, we'll use BMC tools to extract data from the RDP cache on this machine, and we'll see what we've got. As you can see, we have three cache000x.bin files located within our AppData local Microsoft Terminal Server Client cache directory. Now I've gone ahead and copied these three bin files over to our SIFT workstation where we'll actually run the BMC Tools script. You can see the three bin files are located here on the desktop. Now the SIFT workstation does not include BMC Tools by default but it's easy enough to pull down from the GitHub repo. Once you've done so, if we run bmctools.py-h, you'll see there aren't very many arguments. In its simplest use case, we'll specify a source and a destination. So let's go ahead and create an output directory on the desktop. And now let's run our script with dash s to specify the source directory, which of course is this directory, and then dash d to specify the output directory which of course is dot slash output that we just created. Now this will take quite a while to run, so I'll spare you the time that it takes. And in the next section of the video, we'll come back and look at the wealth of BMP files that resulted from this relatively small amount of cache. And I think you'll be amazed at just how much was obtained. Welcome back. It ended up taking about three minutes for the BMC tool script to finish parsing our RDP cache. And if we take a look at the output directory, we see that more than 19,000 BMP files were generated from this relatively small amount of RDP cache. So that's pretty amazing. Now let's take a look at the actual images themselves. And at the very top of our output directory, you can immediately see what looks like a command prompt and we see ping-w100-n1, the first two octets of an IP address that's associated with our lab network, 
and it looks like someone is piping that through fine string looking for TTL. So this looks like potentially a ping sweep. Now, a word of caution as we look through these images. Literally anything that was on screen during this RDP session could potentially be part of this RDP cache. So just because we see a command prompt here does not necessarily mean that that command prompt was run on this server. It could be that someone was viewing an image of the command prompt or an image of a command prompt on a website, for example, or it could be that someone pivoted to another server and launched this. So just keep that in mind as we look through these artifacts. Now, if we continue to scroll down, here we see what looks like Windows Server 2012 R2, which looks a lot like the default background associated with a Server 2012 R2 box. And if we continue to scroll down, we see what looks like the Server Manager. And as I continue to scroll, you'll notice on the right side, we're barely making a dent. As far as the scroll bar goes, we've got a long way to go. Here we see what looks like a PowerShell prompt. Again, I'm just quickly scrolling through here. In real life, you would probably want to very closely pay attention to these and try to piece them together like a puzzle to see exactly what the user may have seen on screen. So let's just go ahead and grab this bar and continue to scroll down through the wealth of BMP files that we've got here. Here we see what looks like the registry. So that's interesting. Possibly someone running regedit or again, viewing a web page that had that as an image. Here we see more output from a potential ping sweep. And as we continue to scroll down, we see another server manager looking screen. And there was something interesting. It appears that someone was searching for Mimikatz. So that may be of interest to us. Well, I'm sure it would be. And if we continue to scroll down, yep, there it is, official Mimikatz links, it looks like. So again, someone potentially viewing a web page that had Mimikatz related information, perhaps in an attempt to download Mimikatz on the server, we don't know for sure. Here we see more output from what looks like another ping sweep, and we also see some MAC addresses here and what looks like the output of IP config. So that's interesting. And as we continue to scroll down, we see another PowerShell related command prompt. Again, someone potentially executing a ping sweep. And here we've got what looks like another series of search results, potentially for Mimikatz, as I saw. Uh, something about attack directory. And there's what looks like Mimikatz. So definitely something we would be interested in. There's Mimikatz again more command prompt output. And again, we see some other artifacts here indicating 2012 R2. We see what looked like a website in the address bar there for AD security. So again, I'm just very quickly scrolling through this massive amount of data here. This artifact certainly isn't the end-all be-all, and I'm not trying to say that it is, but what I am saying is that at the very least, this can give you a place to focus your investigation. So if RDP cache is available, certainly take a look at it. We have to be careful again because it doesn't necessarily mean that the images we're seeing were executed on this particular server. But at the very least, that was part of the RDP session. So it may indicate that someone was attempting research or looking at web pages that contain these images, and it may help us focus the investigation. So just keep that in mind the next time you are looking at something that may have RDP cache available to you. If you grab a, an entire user profile, that will be located within the AppData local path. So 
take a look at that, or if you have a lab environment, that would certainly be something worth playing around with. So that's all I really wanted to show in this video. As always, I would like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this. Please do like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and share these videos with anyone that may find them to be of interest. And I will see you in the next video.